Okay, so I'm going to be making this Damascus steel knife. This is some Damascus I made with a friend. You can see this is in the rough form. Um, this piece here I've um, thinned out considerably and I've laid out this shape onto it with some die cum just so this stuff seems to last better than Sharpie and the oil and stuff. Um, so yeah, just a simple skinning knife and this is a ladder pattern Damascus steel. Um, you can kind of see the, the cuts where we cut it and then forged it out again to get that pattern. So I'm going to bring this over to my metal bandsaw to cut this out and then we'll grind it to shape on a belt sander. Okay, so I don't go straight up to the lines on this because I don't really, this might not be the complete final shape. I prefer to do the, um, get up to the lines on the belt sander, but this gets rid of most of the material so that I don't go through hundreds of dollars worth of belts. Okay, so here we go. This is a uh, 2 by 72 um, inch belt sander, and... Um, this is a pretty worn out um, belt. Uh, I think it's a Norton Flame or something like that. Um, they're pretty expensive and I'm not sure if I like them, but I thought I'd try them out. And um, yeah, I use the wear pretty the worn out ones for this because this will really mess up a new belt. And I'll use the new belts for doing the bevel later. Okay, so um, I wear a respirator for this, so because um, of the metal dust is pretty bad for you and I definitely recommend that so here we go Okay, so here I'm finishing the shape of the handle and kind of feeling it in the hand to make sure it feels good and then doing fine adjustment and um, in this case I'm going a little over the lines. This is kind of important to get a perfect um, handle shape. Okay, here you can see um, I finished shaping it. It doesn't take that long, a few minutes. Um, and, you know, I go around and I make sure it feels pretty good in the hand um, as I do it. And I'll change the shape a little bit um, right now to make sure it feels good. Um, the shape I laid out isn't necessarily the finished shape. Um, so at this point, I'm going to start laying out for a um, bolster piece of brass right here. And I'll put two holes for the handle here.
Okay, so this is a chunk of brass, three-eighths thick, and um, I am going to be making a piece, I'll be cutting out two pieces for this, for a bolster in the front of the knife. Um, so it'll be um, inch and a half by five-eighths each one, so... Okay, so now I have the basics laid out. I can lay out, this is just a carbide scribe. So there we go. Um, so quick sanity check, this looks good. Looks about right, I have a little bit extra on there. Um, so, actually, I should cut on a little bit on this side of this. Give myself a little extra room. It's better to have a little bit of extra just in case you don't want to have it too small. So, I'm going to cu go cut these out on the bandsaw and then um, I will clamp them to this and drill the, the two pinholes, so about there and there, um, all at once through all three pieces of material. So, okay, so I've cut these two things out. Um, you see, I mark them so that I know which orientation they go in. Um, that isn't really important right now, but it will once we drill, it will be once we drill the holes. I also, um, lapped these two inside focus there we go inside um things so they're pretty flat and um then we are going to take these and i will clamp them to this to the knife in the correct orientation this is kind of a pain and Okay, they're pretty well lined up, and these little can't twist clamps are great for this because they don't put much, tor you know, they don't put side torque on this and mess up all the alignment you've done. This is where you just can do the final checkup, make sure it's pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect because obviously these fronts aren't polished yet or the backs or anything. Um, and once we have the pins through it, then we will do the polish up. Okay, I'm going to go drill these out for um, eighth inch pins. Okay, so I've drilled those two holes. So this is the front of it. I'm going to write. I'm going to identify that because it makes a difference now. I should also do the back because I'm going to polish the front. Okay, so there we go. Got these brass pins, and these are the exact same kind of brass, 360 um, pre-machining, so that when I peen them over and finish and then polish it on the final when I'm almost done they will be completely blend in hopefully um, these holes are a little bit loose but that's okay because um, like I said we're gonna take it and we'll um, peen them out hammer them um, until they're um, they kind of fill up that extra space um, so I'm going to polish these on <clears throat> the belt sander and hand polish, just the front. The back I will um, flatten and then hand lap so it's pretty flat. Um, and they're parallel to each other so that when you're looking down on it, the knife like this, it won't, you know, they won't be, you won't see a line like you do here. Um, and then um, I will drill two holes in the handle, and it doesn't really matter where those are. Um, 
as long as they're kind of in places that look good. And then I will harden this knife. I do not worry about grinding the bevel before it because um, I always find that it warps and it really doesn't make that much difference um, if it's hardened or not. At least I haven't noticed much of one. And I prefer to not take the chance of warping this piece of Damascus steel. Um, I don't think I'm going to show you any of the rest of it. And um, I'll come back and show you the heat treating process. Okay, so I have polished the front of these two pieces of brass here. Um, rounded them slightly in both directions and polished them up to... I think about 800 grit sandpaper. I kind of like that finish. I don't like getting this brass up to mirror polish it. I don't really like the way that looks. I prefer the satin finish. Um, the back of them I also lapped uh, so that it fit, so that they're flat to each other. And so the wood, when I put it on the handle here, it will meet up well, and there will be very little line there. Um, I also just put two holes in the handle. These are, I can just kind of choose where they are. It um, doesn't matter yet because we'll fit the wood to these holes. Um, so I've cleaned off the die come because when, when I put that in the forge it um, burns off and I don't know if it's really good to breathe. Um, so now I'm going to harden it. Um, I'm not going to grind it at all because I find that um, with my forge, which is a little underpowered, if I have a thinner edge here, this gets up to heat treat temperature before the rest, and then when I harden it, I'll get kind of a dark line here, and because it's Damascus, I will want to etch it, and I will just want to see the Damascus pattern, not just the dark stuff, so um, let's go heat treat this. Okay, so we're over here next to my forge. Um, this is just a propane forge, um, single burner. You can see it coming in on the top there. Um, it's It doesn't get as hot as I'd like it to, but it gets up to the right temperature to um, heat treat this. So it's good enough. Um, so it's uh, propane burning. So here we go. I'm going to light this thing up. Okay got a regulator down here. I'm going to turn this thing up a little bit until I get a little bit. I'm up to one PSI here of propane. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way that's burning. So I'm going to let that heat up. And I, would, I really want to get the whole knife up to the right temperature because like I said, I don't want any differential heating heat treatment on this. So I'll come back when it's getting up to a better temperature. Okay, so you can see that the blade is almost up to temperature. Um, most of it is. The tip is a little bit darker than I'd like it. Um, and this really didn't take long, a few minutes. Um, so this is some um, canola oil I have right here. I use canola oil because it has a pretty high ignition temperature, so I shouldn't get any flames. Um, and, of course, that's safer. Um, if you get flames, it isn't that big of a deal. Just be aware of it and don't burn yourself. So, I'm looking for an, um, this kind of orangey temperature. You can see that the, um, this whole this whole blade is a, the back of it's a little darker red, and then there's this brighter orange um, I don't know if you can see that in the video, probably not, but right here, um, and I'm wearing welding gloves to be careful, I am going to try to get the whole blade area, I'm not too worried about the handle, um, up to a very consistent temperature of that. It's starting to look pretty good. It's nice to use, it's nice to have these smaller blades for this. And then I'm going to pull it out and flip it right over into the oil. I'm going to fully submerge the blade and hopefully this works out well. Okay, I am pretty happy with this. So here goes the dunk.
Okay. So. I felt a few ticks when I dropped it in there, which I do not like. But, I hope that's okay. Um, I'm going to leave it in the oil for a little bit. Try to get it down to under 100 degrees so that there's no odd stuff going on. Okay. Um, I'm not too worried about the handle. It was never up to any um, temperatures that were going to mess it up. So, um, I'm going to let that cool. Uh, and I'm going to turn off my forge. And um, after this, all I have to do is put in the oven. I'll put it in for an hour at 400 degrees and then um, let it cool a little bit and then leave it for another hour at the same temperature. Um, and after that, it will be to uh, about 58 to 60 Rockwell. Um, hopefully, we'll see if that's... Um, I have a few s files, um, hardness testing files, so I can tell that, but that's usually where it falls into. Um, that's, because right now, um, all going well, it was really brittle. Um, so, I will come back after I've done all that. Okay. <clears throat> so, I have hardened it and tempered it. <clears throat> and then I sandblasted it with some uh, 60 grit medium just to get off all the um, black scale from the heat treating process. You can kind of see the Damascus pattern in it, which is kind of cool. Um, so this Damascus isn't perfect. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that. This looks like some sort of imperfection. And there's another one right there. You can see this. I can kind of feel that. Um, this one will be covered up. Anything the handle will be covered up. Um, th I'm going to be grinding this blade, obviously, for the bevel. I drew, you know, this line here um, is where I'm going to I'm going to grind the bevel about there and back. Probably going to leave a little bit of. I'm going to grind the bevel up to about here, and that leaves. I kind of like the way that looks, or I might bring it all the way up. Um, but I want to grind it from here back because that, when I set this on it, if I line up those holes, you see that gives me an amount of good amount of room. And there's a small imperfection right where I drew that line right here, and I want to grind through that a little bit so it's not in the flat part, and hopefully it goes away. Um, if when I finish grinding it, there's still a ton of perfect um, imperfections in it, I will scrap it and. Um, yeah, which I hope doesn't happen, because I've already put quite a bit of work into this. So, I'm going to go grind the bevel. Okay, so, we're here over at my belt sander. Um, see, I put on this, um, guard here, and this, um, is just so, um, it leaks, it lets me, um, line up this so that the two sides are the same place, um, and then I have this piece of, um, what, like, inch and a half tubing here. And that just lets me um, rest it, because um, I have trouble holding it still without a rest. And that helps me do this. Um, it is freehand, though. There's nothing here that's setting the angle for me. Um, so I have this set up at a slight angle. It's actually off a little bit. Tap that into place. Um, and then I'm going to go, and I'm going to start grinding it. I've started with... This um, belt, which I use to shape it, um, so it's, pr it's pretty worn out, but that's um, okay. I'm going to start it with this one, just do the first, like, a quarter inch of it, just so I don't destroy a new belt when I dig this sharp edge into it. So, um, let's go. So there we go, I've started grinding it, just a start, um, and I will do this to both sides, maybe a little bit more, and then I will switch to a new, a um, fresh belt, so that it will, um, it's not as likely to overheat this, because at this point if you overheat it, get it to change color of the steel, it will um, ruin the temper on it, and you have to go retemper it, which is a pain in 
a pain and it also is much more likely to warp it and hurt it. Okay, well I'm going to grind these bevels and then, um, okay, so I finished grinding this. Um, you can see I made that edge pretty thin. Um, I like it that way. Um, you know, it, it's not as, um, you're more likely to chip an edge like that, but um, the person I'm making this for is probably not going to use this knife this much and if you really want to just, if you're just skinning an animal or cutting up, you know, pretty much anything, really you don't need, uh, there we go, um, you don't really need that thick of an edge unless you're like chopping down a tree or, you know, picking at something. And um, I feel pretty confident with my heat treating methods that this wouldn't, if you jammed it into the wood and bent it over that it wouldn't break off the tip. Um, I've done some experiments with that. I'm not going to try it on this knife because I don't want to have it accidentally break because it is a slightly different steel than I'm, than I'm used to. Um, but it looks pretty good. Um, the grinding seems to have taken out most of the imperfections. There might be one right there. Yeah. But that doesn't look too bad and that's the only one I can see in it. Maybe something there, but almost imperceptible and I think once I etch that it'll be imperceptible for sure um so yeah um I, and this is to 120 grit belt so that you can see it's not perfectly flat that's where it, um now I'm going to sand it with a <clears throat> a little stone um I think it's 320 grit and I'm just going to stand on that until this whole all the um, grind marks are out and then I'm going to go up to a higher grit and probably 400 or 600 and then keep going in that. Um, I'll show you my setup for that and I will also sand to about here with that because I'd like, you know, you want to put, you, this part's going to be seen so you want to see that part wood. Um, and I haven't actually chosen what kind of wood I should do yet but yeah, that, I've got some ones I'll look around and see what I like. Okay, let's go over and look at a sanding setup. Okay, so I use these little stones. I have a few of them here. They're all the same grit. Um, they used to be white, but um, after um, all this stuff gets stuck in them. Um, I ch it's really hard to get them cleaner than this. Um, I always use WD-40 um, lubricant, and it keeps... Um, these less packed than they already are um, and this is a really long process probably the longest process just because um, you know you're just going you know just all hand work and these are really fine stones um, I could probably go with rougher stones but I like these it's perfectly uh, reasonable for these it also just it just um, if I used a rougher stone then I'd have to go to these so it might be six six and one half dozen and another um, I haven't really experimented, um, but I'm just going to start sanding at these. And then um, after I've gotten all the vertical scratches out of it, um, I go and I'll use some other sandpaper here, some other kind, and that I will use wrapped around something flat. I think I have a, I have a chunk of um, cold rolled steel that I use for that, and um, then I will, and then the last pass I do by hand, I hold a piece of sandpaper, I'll put this in my vise and I'll just slowly move it all out and um, just drag it across it on the same side. That leaves a really nice linear finish on it. And um, and then I will etch this in some um, ferric chloride acid, which will um, bring out the Damascus pattern. And then I wrap it up in um, uh, masking tape for the... Um, so I can put the handle and stuff on it. So I will come back in an hour or two when this is polished. Okay, so I have finished <clears throat> with sanding with the stone. And you can see that all the scratches are now going this way. Um, pretty hard to film this. Um, so this is... Um, so now most of the work's done. You can see that it isn't a perfect finish. So now I'm going to go down to the... Um, sandpaper, probably four, six hundred grit, and I will sand with that for a while to get all of the scratches from the stone out, and um, and then 
um, and then I'll step up from that one and I'll go up to probably about 800 maybe a th um, and then once I get to 800 I'll probably use some gray scotch bright like this um, that leaves pretty nice finish for etching you want to have a really nice finish for this Damascus and then after I etch it I will do a little bit more um, polishing um, not sure exactly with what yet I might I have some um, uh, leather with some stropping compound on it. I've used that before and it worked out pretty well, but also just using some 2000 grit sandpaper works pretty well too. Um, okay, well I'll come back to you once I've gotten this polished all the way. So, there you go. You can see that I've polished this up to a mirror finish almost. It's not quite that nice. Um, doesn't want to focus on it. Um, there you go. Um, you can kind of see the Damascus pattern in it, which is pretty nice. Um, and that's up to a 2000 grit um, sandpaper. <coughs> um, and so now I have. I am going to, um, it's, I cleaned it off with some alcohol, and, um, so it's pretty much as clean as I can get it, uh, you know, a fresh rag to wipe it all down, and then, um, and then I'm going to etch it in ferric chloride, which, um, um, you can buy at Radio Shack, um, as a, uh, board etcher, I think, something like that, um, it's not that strong of an acid, but you still don't really want to get it on your hands. And it will, if you spill it anywhere, it will make everything rust, any piece of steel. And so you want to be careful with it that way. Um, even the fumes of it, if you left it open next to a chunk of steel, it starts rusting it. Which you have to be careful with, you know, if you've got some precision instrument near it, you don't want that to, you know, you want to be careful. Um, so... I'm going to etch it right now, and it will really bring out that pattern. It's pretty cool. Okay, so here we go. This is the um, acid I'm using. You can see that. It's, um, you know, Radio Shack. Just, yeah, I think it was like 20 bucks, not that much. Um, so I've got the knife here. I just put on a little bit of wire with the hook on it, and... This is the bottle of acid. There's um, some acid down there. It's, a, it's watered down a little bit. <coughs> and um, so I'm just going to dip this in here. I'm just going to pull it out and show you what it looks like. This is, just, this is just a few seconds in there. You can already see the Damascus pattern coming out. I'm going to leave it in there for a lot longer than that, though. Because... Um, to leave it a really nice etch and um, I will grab a pair of pliers hook this over so that I can just walk away and leave it here for a while and then um, probably I don't know um, 15 20 minutes maybe a little less than that I'm not exactly sure how um, uh, what's the percentage of acid in there right now um, but I'll just keep my eyes on it there we go I etched it and then I polished it again with the 2000 grit sandpaper and you can see how beautiful this is. Um, I, I let it etch for qu quite a while, um, I think about 15 minutes in that pretty strong acid so you can actually feel it. Um, and I did that so that when I, c I can polish it and you can see that the tops, um, or the silver part of this is really shiny, well the darker um, are actually, the dark spots are indents, and so when you polish it, the, um, black etching, I'm not really sure, is that kind of a scale or something, stays in there, so you can really get this, and you can see how fine a detail that is, um, and, um, I, it's, I believe the steel is 1095 and 15 and 20, the 15 and 20 would be the silver, it has more nickel in it, so it doesn't get etched as quickly, and that's what gives it this just, yeah, this color. Um, and, yeah, it turned out really nice. 
It's a nice piece of ladder pattern. Um, and I've I've cleaned it quite a bit, tried to make sure there's no acid left, um, wiped it like crazy. I also kind of wiped it with the rag um, to do the final polish. You can kind of get some of the polish, um, get some of this um, blackness off of it with that. Um, you can see at the tip there, I think I need to polish that a little bit more. Um, one sec. So here we go. I just have little piece of 2000 grit sandpaper make sure it's nice and clean and um, I should be able to get that get the whole thing looking unique so I need to put a little bit more work into this um, but now it looks a lot better um, and so this is, um, this is how it is I'm gonna clean it off with some alcohol and then um, let that dry and then wrap it up in tape. You want to make sure that there's absolutely no acid left and like, there's none left in these holes or anything because um, if there is it will rust this and you really don't want this to be rusted at this point. So um, yeah um, at that and then I will um, take the brass bolsters and glue them on and peen the um, pins over um, and that will be um, and then we'll choose the wood so we're actually getting pretty close now the hardest part is done is polishing this blade okay so here we are I got some epoxy mixed and I am going to glue this on here so I'm over here on my anvil because I am going to peen these down so I have a ball peen hammer here and I'm just going to peen them down like that. Okay, so that last clip um, ended too early, but I think I got most of the points across. Um, but you can see I finished um, peening these over. Um, they're a lot bigger than they were before. Um, hopefully they filled in those holes so that when I sand this off, there's no um, gap. Um, it definitely squeezed. I didn't even have to clamp this just because the hammering, you know, the it peened these together and then kind of clamped it closed. So I have a really nice, um, this is on here mechanically and by the glue so that it's, so nothing's going to um, seep underneath there. And, you know, I mean, there's solid brass pins through here. So, um, it's very unlikely to go anywhere. Um, I cleaned off the front of this and so that this is nice and clean with alcohol and everything. Um, I don't like using acetone for this because it will eat at the epoxy and um, and could potentially you know destroy the epoxy bond a little bit back which you don't want. Um, so now I'm going to choose a wood handle for this and then um, I will cut that in half um, that piece in half and sand it to put on here. I'll show you that. Okay, so I picked this piece of walnut. You can see it's got some really nice grain patterns in there. Um, I think it's some, you know, somewhere near knot maybe, but nice, nice looking. I like the way walnut looks with brass anyway, especially once this brass, you know, if it's like, if you're looking at it, it's a nice combination. Um, and this is a great, this is a perfect size piece, a little bit wider than you need, which is nice. Um, the handle fits on it perfectly, so no wasted wood. I think this was a chunk someone gave me. I can, you can, um, usually find some woodworker, um, find woodworker in town. They have little blocks of wood like this all, um, because, you know, you can't, there's not much they can make out of this because they usually cut it off of a bigger chunk they made into a chair or something. So um, it's really easy to go and get some off of them because they're, you know, they always keep that kind of thing because it's some expensive wood, but they really can't use much use of it. And even if you have to buy it off them, that wouldn't be, that shouldn't be that big. They won't charge very much, I'm sure. Um, so I will... We're gonna. I'm gonna bring this into the other shop where I have the wood cutting bandsaw, and um, but first I'm gonna lay out this a line along the center of this. 
Okay, so I have these two flattened out. You can see that really nice green pattern in that clearly now. Um, so I label these with some different marks just so I make sure they stay the same, idiot proof. Um, I labeled these with front back, but I actually did that backwards because I think I want this in front because um, most of this will be ground away. Um, you know, if you look at, you know, I can go like this or I could go like this. I'm probably going to go like this. Eh, maybe not. I'm not really sure. You kind of have to make that decision about which um, way of laying this out gives you the be best detail. Um, and then you take it, you put it like, you do this. Um, one thing I haven't done yet is ground the front of these till they're really flat. I'll do that on a belt sander. Um, you got to make sure those are really good and flat and um, so that they made up really well against this. And then, um, and then once you have that done, you will put it, you know, I just kind of set it on here and I'll take a little clamp clamp it on there, drill one side, then you can take that side off and make sure make sure that you did it the correct way that you've that you're doing the other side, you're not doing something like this. Um, put, drill the other one. There's no need, at least I haven't found any need to drill them um, simultaneously. So um, I will do that and um, bring you back. Okay, so I've cut two pins to the correct length, and I'm going to put this together. These are a little bit of a tight fit, which is okay. It leaves a nice, um, means that they, there's no line around them in the wood, which is, you know, makes it look nice. So, let's get this together. This is always a difficult part, because these holes are pretty close, but never perfect. <coughs> there we go. Okay, then let's fit this other side on. There we go. It looks fit up. It looks pretty good. Um, so, yeah, the camera got jiggled a little bit on that one. Um, there you go. Um, <coughs> so, there you go. It's fit up. This is in the rough shape. Um, I do. you got to do this before you get any epoxy out to make sure it fits pretty well. Um, everything looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to glue this up. So, I use 5-minute epoxy, um, because I have, I've had no trouble with it being strong enough. Um, my shop's pretty warm, so I don't worry about heating it up or anything, but if your shop's cold or you store it in a cold place, you definitely want to make sure it's up to room temperature, or even a little bit warmer makes it flow a little better Okay, so now that I've got this um, almost put together, of course it's gonna. This is always a pain. There we go. Got that to go in. So now I've got a ton of clamps over here ready to go, and. Of course, I should have set them to the right width first, but that's okay. The advantage of having maybe a two-ton epoxy, or I'm sorry about that, my camera mount just just died on me. Okay, I think that'll work. Okay, um, is that you have a little bit more working time? Okay, maybe this camera work mount won't work. Let's try something else. Okay, I'm sorry about that. My camera mount really didn't like the way it was 
had it set up. So I've got a ton of different clamps here. Yeah, I'm not gonna go with those yet. Um, <laughs> and you put on way more clamps than you think you need because there's no reason to put on too few. Okay, so I finished gluing up the handle and then I lost all the video from there on. So I'm going to try to um, cover up what information was in that um, bit. Um, this is pretty much what the handle looked like coming um, off the gluing. It was just, you know, the block of scales on the knife. And um, then I go over to the belt sander and I will sand it down. Um, a few things to keep in mind is that the brass bolsters um, are just a little bit thinner than the, um, than the wood. And you need to be careful when you're sanding this down that you keep those two in the same plane because the wood's going to sand a lot faster than the brass. You know, let's say the brass is here. Um, and if you, gr if you take a belt, if you take your belt edge and you ended up standing too much here, you're going to have to bring down all this brass to fit it. You know, if you have an edge like that, this is an exaggeration of what I mean, but you don't want to have it like this or like this because you want to have a smooth transition to brass to wood. And you have to be really careful of that because the brass does sand a lot sm um, more slowly than this, than the wood. And while you're sanding the brass, you do not want to overheat the brass because it will conduct it and stays hotter for a lot longer. And you do not want to um, burn off the epoxy or overheat something at this point because there's not much you can do about it except for scrap the knife. So let's go over to the belt sander and I'll show you some techniques. Okay, so over here at the belt sander, you see I have put on a 36 grit cheap aluminum oxide belt. I like these for grinding the handles because grinding wood, it, you don't need as nice of a um, belt and um, it removes the material quicker and is less likely to burn, I found. Um, and so usually the first thing I do is make sure that these are, that the sides are flat, um, get the pins, the brass pins flush, and then I grind the whole thing to shape. I, I get all this, um, all the wood down so that there's no sharp corners. It all hits. Um, I can see steel all the way around it. I have to go slower where the brass is um, because it's, it heats up. Um, and then once I get it to that rough shape, then I'll start um, sanding around this to it. And you have to be careful you don't just put like a quarter inch um, radius on the e on this sharp edge or something. You really want to make sure that the entire thing is rounded reasonably consistently all the way around, or at least that's what I like, if that's what you're going for. Um, with this wider handle where you got three eighths on either side at least, you definitely want to work on that. If you've got like a quarter inch on either side, you can go with more of a flat handle design. Obviously that's all just what kind of knife you want. But you, I really like, you really want to be careful that you're getting a whole, um, you're getting the whole thing rounded. And that does take a while because you're trying to get just that that little, that bigger curve and it all fades in. That's really quite difficult, especially where the transition to the brass is up here because the brass is going to want to go slower. And this is when you have the brass is, you know, one of the, you know, a quarter inch radius and this is a three eighths inch radius. And then you have to, it, it really, you can easily mess up the transition there. So you have to be really careful when you're doing that. And then, um, I go in and use this wheel to, um, kind of fade out the, um, the, uh, I do the radius on the inside, which is by far more, um, the most difficult part because you're trying to get that whole radius and you have to be doing it on a wheel. And that's another time where you need to make sure that you're hitting the brass and keeping that consistent. And then I go up to the slack up here where, um, I can, um, where it's kind of slack belt like thing. Um, and then you start, um, using this to round out the thing, but this you really need to, um, make sure is, um, you, you want to have already gotten a pretty good radius before you go up here, because this will just put a quarter inch radius on the edge. Um, and this will just, um, but this will get rid of all the facets or whatever. And, um, but once again, you can't really get inside the concave part that you got with the wheel. So there's going to be kind of faceting inside that. And, um, 
and you're just, you're, that's not really something you can get out, at least I can get out on these hard wheels. If you had a softer, like a rubber coated wheel, um, you probably could, but those are, um, I just haven't bought one and I tried to make one once and yeah, it didn't work out. So I leave the facets in there and then I will switch to a 120 grit and then a uh, 220 grit belt and try to get out all the scratches from this. And then, um, and also make the facets a little bit smaller inside, uh, you know, get everything a little bit smooth, smoother. You want to make sure that the end is nicely rounded. That's quite difficult. Um, but you just, at this point, you've got so many hours into this knife, you do not want to just stop when you've gotten a somewhat rounded handle. Take the extra 30 minutes, if it takes that, to get it all nice and rounded. There's no point slacking out on the last um, stage. And then, once I got um, a shape that I like, I'm gonna go, I go over and I start hand sanding. And um, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I put the piece in this um, vise right here just where I sanded everything else. And I go at it with this, uh, I think it's 120 grit, grit um, just a piece of emery cloth. You, ha I, you can buy them in rolls. Here, I got a roll down here. Um, you buy them and they look like this, these big rolls of them. Um, and I just cut off a foot of it. And I think I went through three or four of these pieces um, of, you know, these one foot pieces, um, wore them out, just sanding it along, pulling it down. And then um, the biggest part is right there in the transition between the brass, let's say this is the brass again, the brass and this piece getting in there, sanding that out, getting the brass smoothed out, and um, that was the biggest part, and that's the really important, because that's right where your index finger goes, and you want to make sure that you can't feel any transition between brass and metal there. And also, of course, everywhere else, getting all the scratches out, getting it all smoothed out, and using this. And this, um, you could probably go up to a higher grid on the belt sander, but it's just... Um, but I just, the hand sanding really, you it's harder to mess up, um, and yeah, it takes a little while, but you can still remove material. Like, there's nothing you can't do by hand, except for just time limits. So I did that to the whole knife with, I think I went through several strips of that stuff. I can see them all over my bench here. Um, and, um, and then I got the knife to a, a nice shape that's, you know, the shape's right, all the scratches on the brass, from this we're going in this direction and the wood is mostly going in this direction and then I went to 400 grit wet sand um, wet dry paper and that was um, that's more than enough to get out the scratches from the emery cloth um, and I got all the handle smoothed out and um, and I wasn't too worried about the brass I kind of sanded the brass to get all the big scratches out of it and um, and then I used this and I made sure all the scratches um, in the wood were kind of going lengthwise, and then I taped off, I took some masking tape, and I taped off right along this edge between the brass and the wood with some masking tape, and then went in there with my um, sandpaper and sanded the brass in this direction along the outside, and then um, got the steel on the top, which you want to make sure the whole steel is polished um, from the tip of the knife back through the handle, and I made sure that was going um, lengthwise the knife, but the rest of the brass was going across the knife because that's the way I like the brass to look. Um, and that's painstaking because you, you know, you're trying to get all the brass to look right and polish correctly. And um, that's kind of a pain because, you know, you're standing along and you pull off the thing at the wrong angle and you've got the swoop or something like that. And you, and, or you stop halfway through and you've got all these marks in it. It takes a while. Um, but that is really important to make the brass look good because that's a huge part of the aesthetics of the knife. And then make sure that the front edge of the brass is nice and there's no sharp edges there. There's no sharp edges along the back edge of the knife, you know, like where the knife would be up here. Make sure that here there's no sharp edges on the top. You just want to make sure because that's your prob there's a lot of times where you choke up on a knife and if there's a burr on that, that's not so great. Um, and so those are all really important things, and I just I think I went up to 400 grit on this because walnut um, isn't that hard of a night of a wood, so it doesn't really um, you know sanding up to a thousand grit doesn't make much difference from 400 grit. 
because it's just not hard enough. If you're using ebony or something like that, definitely want to go to a higher grit. Okay, um, I'm going to go show you the finished knife. So here you can, here you go, you can see the finished knife turned out really well. Um, I took a lot of time to polish the handle, got it really nice. Um, I oiled the handle with some tongue oil, and I'm going to make a leather sheath for this in an upcoming video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please um, like and subscribe.